They're gonna make a movie on your life. Who do you want to play you? To play in a jackass? Yeah, man. And the, believe me, this shit is dope. Would you ever box Tyson Fury? Heavyweight title in MMA and boxing? Obviously. Obviously. Let's I mean. go! <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Good? We're here with the champ, everybody. We are here yeah. with the uh, UFC heavyweight champion of the world. Um, Francis, I'm Andrew. This is Akash. Nice to meet you. Uh, we also have Alex yeah. and Mark nice and Dove in the room. We are very excited to speak with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. You are officially, I think by most people's standards, the baddest motherfucker on the planet now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the whole planet. Think about that. I don't know if there's a single guy that can beat you up on the whole planet. Well, um, not if I, uh, if, if I stop walking, yeah. If you what? If we stop. I say if I stop walking, if I stop uh, walking. If you uh, stop working, working, maybe they could do it. That's fair. I just think it's at a pretty amazing feat. You know, uh, I was listening to a podcast with you and, and Joe Rogan, and you were detailing your life story. I'm sure everybody's going to ask you to tell your life story. Uh, I won't ask you to do it right now, but please go listen to that podcast. It was uh, amazing. They're oh. going to make a movie about your life. They have to. Hollywood's already working. I'm sure your agents right now are telling you, you know, Markel's probably in your ear. He's like, we're going to make this movie. Who do you oh, want? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We've been, we've been on that for quite a while now. We've been working on <laughs> behind the scenes. You know, um, we, we, we didn't make it here uh, just like randomly. It's been a, a lot of work behind the scenes. Like uh, even in the gym and uh, like uh, on the agent wise, like such as Michael, he's been working behind the scene for this moment, building up everything. And yes, there's not nothing that uh, we, uh, we haven't think about. And uh, my team has been doing such a great job. So as far as for now, we don't have nothing that we have to really start from the bottom. I have a question for you. They're going to make a movie on your life. Who do you want to play you? Who do I want to play me? Who better actor than me? Let's my go! Life? <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be so cool, man! Because I don't, I don't have to read the uh, the script. I don't have to act like me. Things I'm just, I would just be me, just be natural and happen, you know. And uh, the the whole line gonna be in my mind. I don't even have to read it. I don't even have to nothing. So yeah, <laughs> I think that's great. Now, now I heard like whispers of you maybe being in the uh, in Hollywood a little bit. Some acting opportunities. Is is there any truth to that? Can you talk yeah. about that? Absolutely. Um, I've been in uh, in 2019. I was in London uh, playing. I had a small a, a role in the Fast and Furious Nine. Okay. Oh, so, oh shit! Yeah. yeah, man. And the, believe me, this shit is dope. Yeah. Like yeah. I was there. I'm like, man. So this house behind the scene looked like for movie. It was impressive. I was blew up like. Wow, you know, I had fun there, enjoy this scene, all the funny stuff that you see in the movie. I'm like, damn, I'm like, so what is, what am I doing? Like, what is this going to look like? They were like, okay, you are a bad guy being in the car fighting, being, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. <laughs> now, who wins in a fight though? You were the rock. You got the rock, right? No, no, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have that in the movie, but maybe in the future that's going to happen. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, um, I think it was, yeah, early, earlier this year. Yeah. Earlier this year, I was in Cali in Hollywood to play in a uh, jackass. 
<laughs> He's a jackass. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I Wait. think that's the craziest thing that I ever seen. Why? What'd they do? Man, I had to punch somebody on the nuts. No, 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 Hey, hey, listen, listen. I did it the first time. So I'm like, listen, man, we know you. People know that you're the hardest country in the world. You wasn't uh, hard enough. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm nervous. Like, I don't know. I can't hurt these guys. Like, did he at least like half kiss or something already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so who'd you punch johnny knoxville no 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 not johnny knoxville he, he was somebody else it was somebody else all right fine you can't tell us oh my god i can't and you had to punch him twice man <laughs> uh, so twice seeing that the first time when and you had to do it already the second time you know i'm like man and he was there waiting for you, uh, <laughs> praying, uh, shaking for you to, to punch him hard on the nuts. Yeah. Man. Hollywood's wow. pretty weird, huh? Basically, especially for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, especially for that one. I'm like, wow. But listen, like when you uh, follow up with the jackass uh, story, you kind of understand. That exactly the kind of stuff, stuff that they do. Like, yeah. It's all about crazy stuff. And that's what makes it special, you know? Um, I was watching an inter uh, interview with you, and uh, you were talking about, like, the importance of confidence and, like, believing in yourself, right? And yeah. um, what, I'm, what I'm so fascinated by with you specifically is your whole life – you have to believe in yourself that you can do something while everybody around you is going, don't do that. Don't leave Cameroon. Don't try to get into Europe. Don't do these things. It's dangerous. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Right. And you yeah. do all of that and then it works out. And then you have to go and learn how to do a sport where people tell you what to do. Was it difficult to have people tell you what to do and then trust what they said? After your whole life, you just trusted what you felt was right? No. I mean, uh, trusting when you, you, you felt was right, uh, your intuition uh, doesn't have nothing to do with knowledge. That doesn't mean, like, when you believe in yourself, that doesn't know, mean you know everything. Mm. You have to learn. But uh, uh, at some point, you just have to have your own God and believe in it because there is no, like, a... Uh, actual statement who says this and this is going to be like this everybody is kind of like guessing assuming you know that's where uh that that's when belief in yourself is very moment i mean believe in yourself doesn't mean you won't go to school because you believe in yourself that's just silly you know you have to learn you have to hmm. uh, explore things you have to uh, experience stuff and that's even one of the reasons because like believing in yourself allows you to experience, to go forward, learn uh, different things, you know. So um, nothing was hard about that because uh, even the first time that I started boxing, I was 22 years old. I mean, I walked, I walked uh, through the gym. Um, I left my village, go to the city, and then I went to the gym. And I was like, I, I, felt, I felt so strong. Like, I felt like I couldn't box two, two people at the same time and all this like i can i can go to the wall wall and then when i went there i feel like i realized that it's not as easy as i thought mm. uh, mm. i still have to learn you know i still have to believe in in the in the technique in the system of in the experience and uh down the road that experience Pay out, but at the beginning, at first, I didn't have that, and I had to uh, trust somebody to believe in something in order to get there. You okay. know, so believing in, in yourself doesn't have uh, any problem to do with uh, learning something. Else. Yeah, it's you, it's not. Um, you can believe in yourself without being arrogant. You could still be humble when you believe in yourself. You're saying. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can still be humble, uh, listen to some people advice, um, uh, counsel, and uh, use the advice to make your own uh, point of view, to make your own statement, because there is a lot of things that they don't, they don't teach you. They mm. don't teach you how to live in life. You know, when you grow up, uh, for example, we all, I, I I'll take this example because we all here might understand. They don't teach you how to talk to a girl, how to find a girl. Mm -hmm. But we all <laughs> under that as a man, you know. We, I mean, you kind of like have your own way, your own techniques to approach and to do this. They don't teach you those stuff. They what? don't teach you how to be a man. Mm -hmm. They teach you uh, uh, intelligence, um, but mostly uh, like wisdom. You, you gain by your own. You understand yourself by looking around and see how uh, the 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 world is moving, and uh, kind of like make your own statement, which is which which is not like uh, any like others who can be different of others and still don't be wrong. You know, you can just have a different opinion and not be wrong because there is not a fact. It's just like assuming. You know. Right. Because nobody know what exactly gonna happen tomorrow. We don't have a guarantee of what gonna happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, so we just assuming. When you have a situation, uh, a situation in front of you, you just guess and go um, uh, among ten solutions. You choose one. Somebody else will choose different one. Another person will choose different one. Well, who knows exactly what is the right solution? There is not the right solution. You mm. just trust your God and you deal with your decision because sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. But you deal with it. But it's, I always believe that it's very important when you're wrong when, uh, with, on your own opinion, then you learn from that. Then it makes you grow more than get wrong on somebody's opinion, on somebody's advice because you didn't apply your own thought, your own opinion. It, for me, it seems like you're living... So, Somebody life, uh, ab um, abandoning your own life and living somebody life. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have a right to learn uh, on yourself, mm. to mistake on it, because it's all what life is about, to learn, to mistake, and to continue uh, evolving. Mm. Yeah, that's brilliant. So based on what you just said, I was going to ask something else, but based on that, what failure in your life taught you the most where you made a mistake trusting yourself and you look back at that and you mm -hmm. think that's a turning point in my life? I, I did a lot of mistakes in my life uh, on my decision. But listen, man, uh, all, uh, I'm going to tell you this. All those, those mistakes, that, those decisions that I have made, all that led me to where I am today. Mm. So there is not a way for me to stand here and say I'm regretting something. Uh, you might, I, I might wish to go back and fix something and change something, but guess what? Maybe by changing something to fix something, I'm going to broke up something again mm, right. and even worse. Yeah. So I deal with it. You know, uh, three years ago, I lost a fight against Stipe uh, Miotish. Uh, I lost. I, I did. Honestly, I didn't do anything right on that fight. Mm. I, learned, I learned from it. You know, I understand that. And today, I don't think if it's just emotion, but I think uh, from that uh, loss, I learned a lot and which make uh, my, my victory today even more enjoyable, you know, more mm. appreciable. Now so, I mean, that's all li what life is about. Right. You mistake, you learn about, you, you learn from your mistake, you move on, keep going. And yeah. Now, when I saw you guys in the ring at first, right? Before the yeah. fight started, I noticed that Stipe didn't even comb his hair. Okay. <laughs> like, he looked like he just got out of bed, right? And I was worried for a second because I was like, this guy just wants to fight. Like, he didn't even give a fuck about putting a comb in his hair. He didn't use gel. He didn't use anything. I was a little concerned. Was there any part of you that looked at him and was like, uh-oh, he's focused? <laughs> when you looked at his hair. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I, 
Yes, I looked at him. I'm like, he's focused. No, because his hair, hair wasn't strong. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, listen, when you're in the locker room, like, getting ready to uh, warm him up, you know, maybe with your coach and your partner going all over, sweating. Yeah. I, I think the last thing that you see is your appearance, how you look. Yeah. You know, if, if your hair is calm or if this is right. You know, at that moment, that's what you think about the less. I I so had I would have been surprised. It was I there was one moment that nobody asked or I didn't see anybody ask you about in the in the post fight press conference, but there was one moment in the fight that blew my fucking mind. It was before you knocked him out, he hit you with a short right hand. Yeah. I've seen him knock people out with that same shot. I forget exactly who it is. I don't know if it was Junior Dos Santos or somebody, but it was the same Fabricio thing. Verdu. Fabricio Verdu. It was Verdum. It was Verdum. That's right. Verdum was kind of chasing him, and it was around the side of the ring, and he has this short right hand. He hits you with it. It looked like it, looked like it hurt, but you kind of got your feet, and the next punch you threw was the knockout left hook. Were you stunned? No, I wasn't stunned, but he hit me, and I fell it. And at that specific moment, like what went in my mind was like, okay, you get hit because you rush and you expose yourself. Mm. And my, the whole drill for the training camp was like, no rush, calm down. And uh, that's even why that's like the most important thing that my team was there telling me. Cameroon was there yelling like, uh, uh, relax, Francis, calm down, relax. He was just yelling like, relax. So uh, when I get hit, I'm like, fuck, I'm doing something wrong. Mm. Calm down, you know, because I feel it. I'm like, fuck, I'm getting something wrong. I'm like, okay, let's reset. Then I, I was there like, okay, let's reset. Let's start all the way. Let's start over. Then he, wa he was just rushing on me. Boom. Then boom, you know, so I was seeing him. I was like, very, seeing, seeing him very well. I'm like, well, I just take the shot. But uh, for me, I was just stopping to move, moving forward. Like, okay. But he hit me with that shot. I felt it like shit, you know? Yeah. Because that... I, uh, I also, uh, even during training, we work on that, like, uh, don't circle on his right because he's good at, uh, circle on his right and then sneak his right, right hand. Yeah. And, uh, when, when I, I get hit by that right hand, I'm like, damn. I get it. I get something wrong, something mm. that we've been working on. I'm like, okay, reset it, focus. Did you, when he tried to take you down, and not only did he not take you down, but you reversed it on him, did you notice a difference in like his mindset? Did he realize in that moment he was in there with a different Francis Ngannou? Well, I think uh, that should have, uh, that was the case, but I didn't like really pay atten enough attention to uh, focus. I was just focused on, on, on my own mindset, trying to control what is going on in my mind, uh, trying to control myself, not to uh, uh, escape of the um, of what was the game plan and what we uh, I was supposed to do. I was just focused on like, okay, yeah, you have 25 minutes, take your time. Take it slow. This is when you get uh, the best out of yourself. The best version is yourself. Came, uh, comes out when you calm, you focus, you are this, you have a uh, clear, uh, uh, you, you have a, that's a clear, clear, best version of yourself. So at that moment, I didn't really notice, but listen, I know that if he tries something, he's going to try. And if he try, I'm going to defend. Mm. And I was even prepared, like, okay, I might defend and something might uh, uh, doesn't work, but I will still be able to defend myself from the bottom if I finally get my back on the uh, canvas. I will rever I can reverse the situation. And, you know, uh, because, yes, you might have the best takedown uh, in the world, but it came, always came some moment for some reason that you end up in the floor. Uh, not taking any credit to Stipe, he has the ability to take anybody down, but you can still even s slip on the canvas mm. and yourself in the floor, and from there they, they won't restart the fight because you slip. The fight going to keep going, and you're going to find your way out of there. So, 
uh, I was training and prepared in case uh, I get there, even though I don't want to get there. I'm like, okay, if ever I get there, the last time I went there, I went out, I ran out of options. If I get there now, what would be my option? What would be, what can I do? What is a, a stupid option if I am down? What mm. would be my own option to reverse that? What can I do and then? Uh, practicing that. So, man, listen, uh, I, looking back to that fight, I, I realized that uh, something happened to his mind at that specific moment that I stopped that takedown. But uh, being in there, I didn't think about it. I only remember like uh, in the first round, in the break time, I was sitting in on the store and my coach was like, uh, and Eric was like, hey, we, we beat this guy already. Let's go there and have fun. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. You know, I'm like, we beat this guy already. Let's go there and have fun. <laughs> because he knew. He knew after because seeing he, Stipe's... Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, from the outside, he has a better option, a vision than me and was like thinking about it. He knew. Now, you are right now the biggest sports star, let's say, out of Cameroon, right? When I yeah. was living in Spain, I lived in Barcelona, and there is a soccer player, football player Samuel by the name Eto. of Samuel Eto'o, who was a superstar. Do He's you think? Do you think that you are more popular in Cameroon now than Samuel Eto'o? Uh, I think I'm just a new generation, not like I'm more popular, mm. and you know, uh, and that's how. The sport moves, Samuel. We, uh, we today we have two different status. Samuel Ito is a legend, and I'm a uh, uh, up and coming. Yeah, you're current. No, like, 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 like current. Yes, like outgoing uh, athlete. You know, you're a champion. So, uh, he's a legend. Okay. Yeah, I'm champion. He's a legend. Yeah, you know. So uh, he's still, he's still a status ahead of me. And which is which makes sense, and it's not comparable. There's always a legend when it comes to sport, and there's always champion. When Samuel Eto'o was champion, uh, there was a legend uh, out there, such as Roger Miller and other players from yeah. the nineties. You know, so uh, this and maybe ten years from now, I will, am I if I keep doing well, I will stand as a legend, and someone will be champion, and that doesn't take. A credit to anybody it's just uh and it's not comparable it's just two different status my um my roommate when i was in barcelona happened to be from cameroon as well right mm -hmm. and um he was telling me like how important it was being from cameroon seeing samuel eto'o and how influential that was and obviously football is incredibly popular sport but so many more people wanted to go be samuel eto'o and it seemed possible because they saw him on TV. Do you think now Absolutely. that happens with, with MMA in Cameroon or even throughout Africa, now that Africa has three champions? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, when Samuel Eto'o was playing, I was in Cameroon myself. And uh, I was dreaming about it myself. Even though I, I wasn't playing soccer, uh, I never really... I mean, I like soccer. He's our culture... And it's the most uh, popular sport out there. Um, but it wasn't my thing. You know, I never felt like, okay, this is what I want to do. Right. Even maybe because I wasn't good at it. I mean, anyway, I wasn't good at it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing. I was just good enough to play in town, have fun with friends sometime. But uh, that's it. Not even to imagine envision my seeing myself being professional but uh, as far as combat sport i always loved combat sport um yeah by the time i was in cameroon she sent me a tour and everybody was dreaming about it it was inspiring people yeah. you know mm -hmm. and um yeah i always believe that i can be something not in soccer but uh in boxing and maybe not his level, level, but at least get something done by my own because uh, we all know where Samuel Ito came from. You know, 
he didn't came, uh, come from like some rich family, some well-educated and classic family. No, he came from this, uh, from this street, you know, from the, uh, like suburban. Yeah. Place like that. And today, it's been a year now that, uh, I've been going to Cameroon because at first when I was talking about doing boxing in Cameroon, even my family don't like, shit, what the hell is that? <laughs> how, possible, how can you possibly think that could be like a job or that could even be something that will happen? Have yeah. you ever seen somebody did it? I mean, those stuff are just meant for people uh, uh, in Europe, in America, but have you ever seen somebody in Africa achieve some something like that? I mean, for those few one who has tried, uh, he didn't go where, and then even when you see them uh, on TV, they they are not doing good. You mm -hmm. know, even their house, they are just like living in the poverty. And that was the and that was the fact. That was true. It's not like they was making it up. It was true. But I loved sport so much that I'm like, okay, maybe he he doesn't he didn't make it, but at least. He's happy for the experience. He enjoyed the process, and he he did what he liked, and um, that's probably what I'm gonna do. At least I'm gonna try. And we don't have the same um, the same destiny. Everyone has his own. I don't know where this gonna end. I true. I do not believe at all that it's gonna work. Mm. But what I do believe, what I do know is I love it. I want to do it. I go for it, hmm. and I don't do it halfway. Hmm. I don't do it do it lightly. I do it very hard. So in case it doesn't work, I can look at myself in the mirror. Or someday I'm like, well, at least I try. I did my best, hmm. and it didn't work. Then I will be in peace with myself. I think that was my uh, my vision. That was my perception of it. Like I didn't truly. I, I believe in it, but there was a part of me who was looking in the reality. It was like, okay, this is the reality. How do you think it's going to happen? Then I keep uh, to answer that. I'm like, if it doesn't happen, at least I enjoy. I go for it. I love this thing. I have, mm. to, I have to do it uh, when I still have a chance, when I'm still young. So, um, yeah. So even my family didn't believe that. So, and they was looking for those people who was like uh, doing like uh, boxing and all this stuff. They didn't. They didn't have a good look about them, you know. Yeah. They're just like, oh, they are stubborn. They are gang. They are this. Yeah. They have all the attributes which is not good at all. So then I just keep doing my thing. Find my way, leaving Cameroon, went in France, trying. Then they started see, see me on TV. And all of a sudden it changed. Hmm. One in a while, then I started to come back. And those things become like very serious. And people are like, what exactly is that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like four years ago, then I start like when I was, building the foundation, um, I started to see like people and I'm like, I heard that you, you're building a foundation. My son want to be a fighter like you uh, and this. How can he do to attend? I was just like surprised, like, whoa. So you're not shocked that your son want to be a fighter. Mm -hmm. so you're, even, you, you're even looking how to help him because he makes sense for you today. Yeah. And uh, and it was very exciting talking about it. And more and more, you know, uh, people started to get interested about it. Um, and I think that's when I truly understand. Like three years ago, when I lost my first title fight against Tipe, and I felt like shit, man. I was here, like going to bed, didn't want the sun to rise the next day, feeling so bad. But uh, luckily, I have the appearance of mine 
to just book a next uh, flight for Cameroon. And then when I went in Cameroon, things changed. Really? Everything changed. Yeah. I went in Cameroon. I didn't even know that then there was uh, uh, aware of what was going on. Man, I was received as a rock star. Wow. Like, the entire country, everybody was congratulating me. They were so happy, so proud, like, good job, this. Like, at some time, I, have to, I had to stop and remind them, guy, I lost the fight. <laughs> I didn't win, though. I mean, you might get confused. I lost the fight. <laughs> you might get like, confused. No, you didn't lose. Like, where are you come from to even, to even get there? To expect that wow. you lost the fight. Yeah. Just the fact that you get there, represent wow. us. We saw, we saw you with the flag in the top of the wall. Uh, to challenge for the world title, something that nobody believed that it could, it could have happened. We couldn't even expect that. You did it on your own and you say you lost. How come you lost? Mm. You make us proud. And hey, listen, I was seeing those grammar who doesn't even know how to read or to write. Uh, they were just looking, seeing, seeing me. I'm like, hey, son. And Francis, I think we, we, yeah. we lost you a second. There we go. It was good? Yeah. Okay. I think um, I think that was John Jones trying to interrupt the interview, man. <laughs> 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 um, okay. You were in the middle of telling telling us about how well you were received when uh, you went back to Cameroon for the first time, right? And these people were so proud of you for the achievement of even getting there because they know how far you had to go. Have you seen the video of yeah. people in Cameroon reacting to the knockout absolutely uh listen we have a video from uh, every city <laughs> crazy like uh they record a video i'm gonna uh i'm waiting for some of those that are gonna send out a video from different cities from people reaction man and uh because we knew that it's gonna be crazy and i'm like okay guy we should we should find a way to have these on tape because it's so amazing and um we are, we have some good that, stuff. That was <laughs> special. There was also a video of uh, uh, a good buddy of ours, Israel Adesanya, uh, was watching with his family out in New Zealand, yeah, yeah. and they went fucking crazy. Crazy, yeah, yeah. He sent me that video too. Hmm. I mean, he sent that, me that too. yeah, that's got to feel so good, like coming from this place where you thought nobody believed in you and now it looks like the entire entire world is tied into your success that's got to feel pretty good no yeah man this feel it feel really good really great but at the meantime um you have this pressure on your shoulder that you realize that you know it's not just about you uh, anymore you have to do everything right now because uh, it's not, as I said before, it was, it's not for you. It's not on your level anymore. It's beyond, way more beyond you, mm -hmm. you know, because today uh, a lot of people look, um, look at you, look as an example. Um, mm -hmm. And even though, yeah, you might say, oh, I didn't sign up for this, but guess what? You are the man. As uh, some people was uh, a model for you, uh, you have to be a perfect model for others. And uh, this means even if you have to uh, adjust something, um, compromise something sometimes in order to get it right, you know, um, to impact some, some life. If that can, can impact some life, then you won't take that much on you. So... Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So how, amazing how do you how do you plan on carrying that extra pressure? Because that's pretty overwhelming when you feel like the whole country is invested in you. How do you plan on carrying that that pressure? Well, uh, the good thing is um, right here, everything is kind of like central, uh, central, central in the same place. Mm -hmm. Do your best. Work hard. Mm -hmm. Do everything that you can to give it the best result, and uh, as long as you do that, I think everything is will be okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's a <clears throat> it's a really interesting thing because the fight that most people are talking about, you even mentioned it afterwards, and I thought you were very graceful to John. You said, "I think John Jones is the the best ever in mixed martial arts," and people talk about the John Jones fight. I from what he tweeted, it didn't seem like he wanted to fight you. It seemed like he wanted to make money getting knocked out by you. <laughs> Cause he just, when, he didn't say when, let's fight. He just goes, uh, show me the money. Yes, maybe because uh he, he has talked about this fight. He had talked about this fight before hmm. and uh, didn't see the money. Ah. You, you know. Um Listen, I think uh, John John has been there for so long time and uh, has had many title fights. But I think if this fight happens, it's going to be the biggest for him, such as for me. Of course. You know, I believe that this is going to be a mega fight, it's a huge fight. So, and um, we all are doing this in order to one day, uh, with expectation to one day have a uh, payday, you know, the mm. mega payday. Mm. And if something comes together to like make this mega fight, so it's just uh, normal to ask for to have a payday. Hmm. Yeah. Because you, it's not like you're asking, you're asking some, for something irrational. You're just asking asking for your own small cut uh, from the the, uh, the revenue that the fight that you make is going to generate. Uh, basically, if you are the man who is stand as a good, good, good and make the fight bigger, I think it's right in his position. Hmm. Yeah, it's what when you go into a fight with with Jones, let's say you're going to fight Jones. What do you see? Uh, are your advantages over him right now? Listen, I have. I think the best way for me to approach um, this fight is not to think. Uh, to, it's, it's just to think that uh, I have already given given uh, disadvantage over John Jones. I think this would be the best way for me to uh, get ready to uh, uh, prepare myself. Uh, into this fight. So what would be some of those things that you think I need to, I'm always improving. Now what do you improve if you want to fight John Jones? What do you got to work on? Every, everything. As <laughs> I said, I'm going to work on everything. I'm going to keep working on my grappling. I'm going to keep working on my uh, uh, wrestling. Mm. And I'm going to keep working on my striking. Mm. You know, uh, I'm going to keep working on my conditioning as well. Um, so I'm going to work on everything. I'm going to keep working on my uh, mental game. All the aspect that if uh, if I can request, I'm going to be working on that because we are talking of someone who has been there like for such a long time. I mean, even though he's very young and I, we are almost the same age, but he's been here uh, even in the USA almost 10 years before me mm. and uh, he's been in the sport uh, for his entire life so the experience that he has over me is so it, there's such a big gap between our experience that I need uh, to compensate that with just with work so I don't think like right now uh, I have a right to stay there and think that I have an advantage on something over John John Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, over anyone else, anyway. What about a potential fight with Derek Lewis again? You guys think that you would do that? Yeah, that would be the, I mean, uh, in the normal world, uh, if it wasn't about the John Jones fight, I think the Derek Lewis fight would be the perfect fight for me next. Uh, first of all, uh, I have a, a rematch. We have this fight that we never really. Uh, did it neither for us neither for the fans you know I lost against him but uh, not because I didn't fight well not because I didn't uh, it was better but just because I didn't fight so we have this I have this thing that I need to fix back um, and he's a, a legit contender 
right now. And uh, my goal as a champion now is to keep the heavyweight division moving. You know, uh, the heavyweight division has been uh, stuck for so long. Mm. Uh, so, and I was a victim, a direct victim of that. Mm. So I decided to like do my own, do way differently. So now that you're a champ, you're saying you're going to be active. I'm going to be active. As I said, uh, I will be ready by July, August. I'm ready to fight twice this year again. Oh, mm. wow. wow. I love it. I love it. Now, I don't know if you've been following. I know that you're obviously a fan of boxing. Have you been following this fight between Jake Paul and Ben Askren? Well, I heard about that, but they've been <laughs> following. I don't think it's... That's enough. No. <laughs> uh, um, I don't think it's something that is much can it will cut my attention at, at that point. Right. You know, uh, I follow the heavyweight division uh, mostly. Um, and yeah, I've been waiting for this uh, Joshua and a Shui is going to take place sometime soon. Now, would you, would you think, oh, no, first of all, who do you think wins, uh, Fury or Joshua? Ah. <sighs> Theory, right? That's how. Uh, I can't like fully say fury because this fight can go either way. You know, uh, of course, fury has the ability, he has the uh, technical skill, he has the skill to keep the fight uh, to the decision. But Joshua also has what to keep. He can stop the fight anytime soon. You know, so yeah. it's either way. 50-50. Wow. In my opinion. You say 50-50. I, yeah. think, I think this is an 50. easy... I think this is the easy fight for Tyson Fury. I think, I think this is... I think no. this is easy. I, I, think, I think since Joshua lost... Uh, he, since he's lost again, uh, uh, Reus, people kind of like slip over him and kind of like they really forget who he mm. or who he was before that fight. And uh, jo just trying to think about Joshua before that fight and uh, match him up against uh, uh, Tyson Fury. Mm. Now, you know that people are going to ask you to fight. Tyson Fury, if he wins, you know, people are going to go, I want to see Francis and Ganu fight Tyson Fury. If Tyson beats Joshua and Francis beats John Jones, would you ever box potentially in the future? Heavyweight title in MMA and boxing. Obviously, obviously. Let's I mean, go. Uh, <laughs> you have to, uh, you have to remember that, uh, my whole dream uh, in my entire life, and that's what even led me here, was boxing. I didn't know MMA until like eight, six, six years and a half. It, uh, no, seven or seven, seven years or eight years ago hmm. when I went in France. I didn't have any idea about MMA. It was all about boxing. So I still have this dream inside me. Even though uh, I get uh, deviated by uh, MMA, who gave me the opportunity that I didn't uh, have at that time. So, but I still have this dream that needs to be like accomplished one day. So I would definitely, at some point, get to Boston. I mean, that would be unbelievable to have the UFC champion also be the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. Wow. That would be the greatest combat sport athlete in history, undeniable. Maybe the greatest athlete. You could argue. Wow. Yeah. I mean, um, that sounds unreal, but it's something that I might, I might chase for him. For it. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm aiming something like that. Oh, I love, love it. it. I love it. Well, look, we don't want to take too much of your time, but I do want to ask, can we see the belt? 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's right here. Wait. <laughs> ah, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Damn well, listen, big. Francis, thank you so much for taking the time, man. We really appreciate you. We're huge supporters of you. Yeah. And thank uh, you guys. we will be there at the next fight. Um, what were you saying, Mark? No, nothing. We could get a picture with him. Oh, yeah. Can we get a picture with you? We're going to stand next to the screen. So you just stay okay. right there, and then we'll we'll be next to the TV. Okay. You're the man. Thank dude. you Thank so you. much, Francis. We're rooting for you, brother. You go out there, man. Keep doing great stuff. Very inspiring. Yeah, it was an honor, man. Okay. Thank you, guys. Cheers. I appreciate you. All right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because you guys need to put some money on the Brooklyn Nets right fucking now because it's a lock. That's right. I'm telling you right now, it's a lock. There's no way that LeBron... Who just picked up? Who the fuck they pick up? Drummond. Yeah, Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond is not going to solve all your fucking problems. Okay, the Nets assembled the Avengers, and you're going to have to deal with it. And there's no way that you're going through them. Nets, 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 Nets. That's your Bitcoin. That's your Bitcoin. The Nets are fucking Bitcoin. Point is, if you want to make some money, you're going to do it, and you're going to go to my bookie. My bookie, my bookie, my bookie, mybookie.ag. Remember, it's .ag. That's what you're going to do. You're going to put your money on those nets, and you're going to put your money on whatever other teams that you want as well. Obviously, gamble on goddamn near anything. Shit. Hmm. You could probably gamble on how successful our new song is. You might not have heard <laughs> it just yet. We might not even have a new song. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Point is, mybookie.ag. You're going to use our promo code flagrant, and this is what's going to happen. They're going to double your first deposit. God damn. Damn right. That's free money. Dollar for dollar. Dollar for dollar. Double. And not only will they match you dollar for dollar, but they're also going to be throwing in a $10 NBA future. Bet. <sighs> All you got to do is enter the promo code flagrant to claim it when you're signing up. That is my bookie. And remember, at my bookie, the terms are simple. You bet, you win, they pay. Now let's get back to this. What's up, everybody? And we're back. Uh, great chopping it up. With the king right now, the heavyweight Ooh. king. Bad motherfucker. Yeah. And what a sweet guy. A dog. I just humble. Humble by life. And you know what? I'd be really nice, too, if I knew I could beat up every yeah. human on the planet. Yeah, you got nothing to prove. Yeah. Like, now I got to, like, hey, fuck you. I'll come yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. Talk shit <laughs> about my podcast. You know what I mean? But, but, like, when you can beat up literally every human, there's not a human on the planet. He yeah. can be like, Usain Bolt is the fastest human. Right. And he's the most deadly human. Yeah. What a crazy thing to be. Yeah. He's the alpha. Yeah, yeah. If you He's don't have a alpha. gun, go. Like, don't fight me. That's true. That's the only thing that could beat me is a gun. Gun or sword. Okay. Also, we did think about, since, you know, Francis is not a um, avid listener or watcher of the Flaring 2 podcast, and we did realize right before we started the interview that we have two machetes and a gold-plated <laughs> fucking AK-47 just sitting here on the table. Drinking out of bullet water bottles. <laughs> and I sincerely hope that he didn't think we put this here to make him feel nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this was not about that at all. This is what the table looks like every single day. Um, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Lil Nas X, the king, bro. Man, this motherfucker did it again. This is the, this is the black gay Tommy Laren. Yo, <laughs> Lil Nas X is black gay Tommy Land. He is, he. This is outrage culture manipulated to a T, and he is brilliant. And Tommy Land would uh would would piss off like black women and black Twitter, right? Yep. And Lil Nas X knows perfectly how to piss off conservative Christians. And the important part of that is when you piss them off, it just blows your shit up. Exactly. And then you because get bigger than ever. Yep. And they are a monolith. Yes. They all think the same way. Now, when I say they, I'm not talking about every fucking Christian, conservative Christian, but there is a body of them that think the same way about things, and when they get enraged, yeah. they fucking go. Now, there's yeah. a few things with Lil Nas X right now. Which one are you talking about specifically? I'm talking about the sneaker. Mm. Uh, but I'm also talking about the video. Oh, the yeah. timing was he. This is a package. He, yeah. yeah, he but knows what he's If you doing. really want to look at it, his first video went at Christian conservatives' favorite genre of yeah, music. Yeah, that's a good point. An amazing genre of music, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> An absolutely amazing one. A genre of music. I don't know. That might be taken over soon, and oh, not by a gay black. Shit. <laughs> by, by a, a gay, gay white. white. <laughs> 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 maybe we give him a little snippet later maybe not we'll see but um it so basically he put out this this music video i think it's called montero montero i think that's his first name yeah montero and uh wild music video we can get to that in a second but he also put out uh a sneaker and he 
I guess he linked up with this brand called, uh, I imagine it's supposed to be Mischief, but mm -hmm. M-S-C-H, yeah. right? And they put together this sneaker, and it's like a Satan Air Max, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's one drop of human blood in it. There's all there's a yeah. pentagram. There's an upside down cross. There's yeah. all these things that would really piss off Mark. Mark came in here fucking heated today. <laughs> yeah. 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 I wore uh, my white Air Max. It's just to, you know. <laughs> yeah, he had to establish some balance. Exactly. There's one drop of cum in every pair. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the rest of the drops are in Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a. So basically, uh, I guess Christian Twitter went crazy. Yes. Um, so much so that Nike had to issue a statement saying that they were not part of this collab. Right. The collab was with Mischief and Lil Nas X. Right. Um, but that's hilarious that like Nike had to actually yeah. speak on the issue. Of course. And um, that Nike and I guess, where, how do Christians feel about like child labor? <laughs> like how do they feel about that like is that devilish a little bit to like no, make bro. child no, slaves no, no. so biblical sneakers? biblical bro yeah was it mm -hmm. i don't think kids had jobs back in the day they, they were did. getting pregnant at like 12 back in the day <laughs> whatever bro you old enough yeah. 13 dude okay you're right the jews established the age <laughs> 12 they look at you like a weirdo but 13 you were an adult yeah. right dove your man that's it yeah 13 there's, 13. A, there's a lot of middle eastern slavery in the bible and uh, so I guess they're okay. I can't with imagine that they were like, you know what, 18 is the cutoff for slavery in the Bible. You know, what I mean, I bet you there were some child slaves in the Bible, yeah, probably, huh? Huh, Dove? Just to get into the crevasses, <laughs> the crevasses. Little, little bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, they're absolutely pissed off about this shit, and I think it's like, uh, I think it really speaks more to the fact that there's nothing going on. Like, when Christians start getting upset about devil shit, you know, life is good. Yeah, it's yeah. the 90s again, baby. We're yeah. in the 90s, or was it the 80s? When, was it 90s? Yeah, satanic that they Panic. Is, I, satanic Panic okay, was 90s? Yeah, probably, probably 90s, 80s. But it always probably. happens when, like, everything's boring. Yeah. When everything's boring and there's no, like, oh, we're worried about the wall or worried about a race war in America. We're worried about... There's literally nothing pissing people off on social media. Then Christians go, the devil's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Then Marilyn Manson, who ended up being kind of dead. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yo, whenever the Christians are right about some shit, uh -huh. I think they need to come out later on and be like, they I told you. Yeah, they yeah. don't do the I told you so enough. They don't, I told you so enough. Because <laughs> they're waiting for their big I told you so when <laughs> Jesus comes back. Yeah. So they just keeping it all in the pocket. Because right now they say, I told you so. They'd be like, really, dog? Yeah. Where Jesus? That's great. And if you didn't believe them about that one, they yeah. got to run through the list of other shit they're yeah. right about yeah, yeah, before yeah. you get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You got to admit you were wrong about every single thing that they said. That was gonna happen. Yeah. They're oh. like, they're gonna force us to get vaccines. We're like, shut up, <laughs> dummies. Now you can't even go back to New York unless you get vaxxed. <laughs> so how do we feel? What are we thinking? What is uh what is Lil Nas X? Is he a genius? Does he figure out outrage He's, culture? This is, is the is genius. He annoying? Like, the what genius is, is he took a song that it, it's fine. Yeah. Like Old, Old Town Road or whatever. That shit slap. Oh, slap. This yeah. is fine. Yeah. But it don't matter. It's going to do crazy numbers because of the outrage behind 32 it. 32 million just, already. I just saw the video. Motherfuck. Yeah. And, and he that just, shit is gay. <laughs> bro, that shit <laughs> that is. That shit is gay. That shit is. Joyner Lucas was at him like, hey, man, what the fuck? My kids are seeing this. You <laughs> see that tweet? Wait, he said that? He tweeted. He was like, yo, man, you didn't put a fucking disclaimer up or nothing? Wow. Yo, son, Joyner Lucas, your kids are gay, bro. Like, just deal with it. You got some gay ass kids. Just watching gay porn on YouTube all day. Well, Lil Nas X <laughs> your kids. He responded with something like, Old Town Road is about adultery and it's like doing drugs or some shit like that. You don't have a problem with that. Well, was but, he doing the adultery and the drugs in the video? Because that's the thing. another dude's abdomen and he was grinding on the devil. The licking of the neck was what I was like, yo, that's oh, I thought it was his abdomen. He, no, he'd be licking. Uh, he did both. But yeah, technically, I think he played all the characters, so he's kind of just kissing Jerking himself. off. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, he played he played all the characters? I'm pretty How was he sure. dancing on himself? I mean, body double for some some of the parts like the stomach and shit like that. But if you look at the face, it's him on all Yo, the Al, Al, it's a little racist, man. Yeah. yeah those were different on, black guys, Al. Yeah. <laughs> those were different black guys. They were, that's but insulting, it's cool. bro. Yeah, it wasn't. It was it really the same? Yeah, it's him. Well, all of a sudden y'all look different, to us. <laughs> <laughs> Which is progress. There we go. <laughs> Point is I guess it's less gay if you're just doing it to yourself on body doubles, but is it? I don't know, bro. Can't we just be a little taken aback because this is we haven't seen this before? Yeah. We heard songs with drug use and adultery. This is the first time I've seen a dude twerking on Satan in a video. 
Yeah, so it's just new. It's yeah. just new. I don't that's even it. care about the Satan thing. Like if, yeah, yeah, I don't care about the Satan <laughs> thing. <laughs> like the Satan thing didn't bother me at all because I don't really believe in it. Yeah. You know, like I believe in heaven because it might be there, but I'm not gonna believe in Satan. I'm not gonna believe in hell. What's the point of that? Like, yeah, I'm not I'm, trying to right? go. Like, <laughs> you're just gonna believe the good stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. if I don't believe in it all. I might as well just pick the good shit and be yeah. like, maybe I'll go there. That's a valid point. Oh, yeah, because so if you do, yeah. you're a Christian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm so pissed off by this motherfucker, dude. Yeah, because if you God don't believe, if you don't believe in hell and then you go there, then you can believe it when you're there. You know what I mean? You're Ooh. like, I'm all right. I'm here. I'm gonna call it heaven. <laughs> <laughs> you're not yeah. gonna tell me what it is. Uh huh. Perception's reality. Exactly. Yeah. Suck it, Satan. Suck it. <laughs> he Probably ready to. <laughs> yeah. As Lil Nas X, he ready. <laughs> Yo, honestly. Why aren't Christians agreeing with this video? Because oh. he's saying the devil's gay, and they're like, gay people go to hell. And he sent himself to hell. This is oh. the most Christian song when you think about it's it. It's kind of Christian. Mm -hmm. It's a Christian-ass song. This, what the hell are you upset about? Dudes this, twerking on dudes? Where should that be? According to y'all. Oh, There you go. Hell. This yeah. video belongs in church as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Uh, Al? I'm not Christian. I don't give a fuck. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Christian. How do you feel about this, Mark? Bro. I would say he did it right. <laughs> like, <laughs> According no. to the book. Well, actually, th I think that's what he said the the video was about. He was like, this is me making a response to all the people that told me to go to hell for being gay. He's like, uh, like conservative Twitter says that I'm going to hell. They tell me to go to hell. So fine, I'll show you what hell's like. Can I just ask a question about that? Like, do you need to tell him to go to hell? Like, isn't that already going to happen? <laughs> yeah, why? Like, why? You don't need to, to why you nudge doing, somebody. Yeah, why are you doing God's job for yeah. him? Yeah, Who I guess you? you don't have to say. That's blasphemy. You ain't God's secretary. That's a good point. Sending messages back and forth from God. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Bitch, do your regular job. Bitch. God over here like, I got it. Yeah. I'm God. Yeah. I'm going to send his ass here. I wrote a whole book. <laughs> what the fuck you need to tell him for? Yeah, it is a little bit much. Like, there's a bunch of fucking teacher's pets. That's oh, what yeah. these, like, uh, uh, uh yeah. there really are these, like, Christian conservatives. They're fucking teacher's pets. Yeah. God, look, <laughs> somebody's fagging about on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not religious at all, right? Yeah, so yeah. I don't have any religious um, uh, backing that's pushing me into believing something is uh, right or wrong or sexy or not sexy. Yeah. Right? But when I see Lil Nas X lick what looks like a dude's stomach, um, your brain is still adjusting. Fam, it's cilantro. <laughs> it's cilantro, dogs. It's, I want to like cilantro. I don't want to be the guy at the Mexican restaurant that's like, can you not have cilantro? Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like a complete herb. Yeah. So I want to watch him lick the abdomen and be like, that's, that's hot, bro. Like, yeah. that shit is fire. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, this tastes like soap. <laughs> tastes like I'm eating soap yeah. right now. You don't think cilantro is less of a vegetable? It's than not. It's arugula. more. It's more. I can't handle it. Mm -hmm. It's so dominant, I can't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a better vegetable than all the other. Yeah. Vegetable, celery, that's nothing. I yeah. eat that as water. It's nothing. Cilantro, I need to stop. Yeah. I need to take it out. I need to, like this, like a fucking pussy, bro. Yeah. So I'm a pussy when it comes to that shit. Fair enough. <laughs> so what you're saying, just dick is so good, you can't handle it. Yeah. If I watch him lick an abdomen again... Bruh, I'm going to start beating off, shooting it up in the air, catching it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? What, Al? Al, what, dude? Can we make that a clip right there? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, make that Al, are you trying to act like you never did that? You never threw yourself out of you? <laughs> <laughs> off the backboard? <laughs> you catch the back of your neck like that Nike <laughs> you gotta do that. You gotta pull a Ronaldo, bro. Shoot it up in the air, catch it back there, let it roll down one side, throw it up, grab it out the air. It's nothing. It's light work. And that's what I'm gonna do that if I keep a, on watching like Lil Scooby snack. It's a fucking Scooby snack. And let me tell you something. I yabba dabba dabba do want him to lick some more belly buttons. That's not from Scooby. Yabba dabba do, bro. That's Flint so just fucking idiot. Hey, whatever, dude. It's the same shit as cartoons. I never watched them, bro. I was busy watching gay sex as a kid. Like Joyner Lucas's children. You know what I mean? Yo, Joyner got to sit down with his kids and ask them why they're so gay at a young age. Just watching dudes kiss bellies all fucking day. 31 million of those views come from Joyner Lucas's household. Oh man. Yabba dabba do is the fun stuff. <laughs> <Not, not. laughs> I thought the yabba dabba do was scooby dooby doo, but it's scooby dooby doo. Hey, Where are, are you? you? Probably looking at gay guys' kiss. <laughs>
<laughs> Yo, dude, Scooby, bro. Nobody want to talk about what Shaggy was doing with Scooby. Nobody oh, want to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody want to talk about he that. He was late catching night shit snack. in his mouth too. Facts. Yo. Facts. Facts. When the lipstick That's came That's what they out? called him in the back of that van. Well, facts. facts. Couple of facts. <laughs> a couple of Fiats. I think it was a Fiat van that they were driving, matter of fact. But for real, nobody ever saw that episode, right? When Scooby's little pink dick came out. Little right? Lip, when lipstick. that Revlon, when that when that little, little Revlon little came little out. Rocket. The rocket, the red rocket that Andrew Santino <laughs> shot out of Scooby's <laughs> dick. Yo, nobody ever want to talk about that. And Shaggy was like, oh, let me put that away for you. <laughs> Shaggy said, let me put that away. Right? Shit. Nobody ever wants to talk about that. I missed that episode. You did miss that episode. I got it on DVR if you want to see yeah, it. Yeah, you know who else? Joyner Lucas's kids probably got that one saved as well. <laughs> Yo, Lucas why is Joyner Lucas up, why is Joyner Lucas out in his kids, bro? Let them come out when they want. <laughs> like that's disrespectful to your kid. Like, why you could Yo, my kids watch gay shit all the time. At least let them know. They know. Sexy ass little Nas X with his thick ass lips. Yo, Lil Nas X He got cutie. some nice lips, he bro. He cutie, yo. Nah, he could polish off a penis. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he could. He could, bro. bro he, he got could. great skin probably from getting cummed on all the time. That Dude, shit is fire. That's what they say is the best thing for your skin, bro. Yo. His skin got a lot better here in Miami. It so. did. I've been oh. coming all over my skin. Oh. Tan and cum. Dude, oh, look at Dove's sexy. hands. Dove got the softest hands west of the Nile. <laughs> Wait, so Dove helped you out with that? What are you saying? Yeah, from the lotion, bro. From, no, from his own lotion. Yeah. Uh, oh. That motherfucker jerks off on his hands, rubs it in. Word? Oh, fire. 100%, dude. Natural. Fire. <laughs> no, nah, your hands are bad. So. No, nah, nah, your hands are rough today. They're oh, clammy from oh. this conversation right now. Really? <laughs> Bro. By the way, the song's called Call Me By Your Name. Which part made like, you the most nervous? Was it the word <laughs> getting used multiple times? <laughs> whoa, 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 dude. Whoa, dude. What happened? Whoa, dude. What? You just use a crazy word. We don't use that word. What did I say? <laughs> I think you said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we old school today. <laughs> Yo, we really are. Is this Patreon? <laughs> no, it's not. We're really <laughs> acting like we got nothing to lose. Dude, you know that I got little Nas and, coming and, in here, bro. Sucking on flamingo beaks. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that motherfucker be sucking on flamingo beaks. That's his new video, Al. Yo, for real. You never seen that? <laughs> you never seen it? Bro, you never seen Lil Nod's ex suck on a fucking toucan beak, bro? <laughs> toucan. Putting the fruit in the loose. Are you trying to say he's sucking on a cockatoo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I think he's probably sucked a cockatoo, oh bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> or three or four, Mark. You never know how many. Shout out to Lil Nas X. We're talking about you on the biggest podcast on the planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? You did it. You know how to rile up the conservative Christians. <laughs> yeah, we're Yo, we're a conservative upset. Christian podcast. <laughs> Uh -huh. When you think about it. Yeah, we got one. Yeah. We got one conservative Christian right there. Uh -huh. yeah. Alex. Yep. I was a conservative Christian, bro. You also could be considered a conservative Christian. Yeah. He got Jesus tattooed on his arm. Did you get Jesus on your arm? I got my hero. Who's your hero? You wait and see. Oh. oh. Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What did he say? What did he say? He said Cosby. Cosby. <laughs> This motherfucker. I'm just thinking <laughs> about that. heroes, dog. Edit I'm just that. thinking about heroes, yo. <laughs> Akash was wearing the what was the university that he said? University? Akash was wearing his Hillman University sweatshirt. Yeah. Which isn't even a real school. It's literally just the school Cosby sent his daughter to. And a different world. And different he was wearing that shit for like a good three years after the Cosby. I still wear it. It's just hot. You're a wild boy for that, son. Yo, you are a wild. Yo, Akash is a wild boy, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Son, I don't know about Miami Akash. This but guy's I on like, a different level. I like that he got a new shirt, and you can tell it's new because it still got all the folds <laughs> from when you first opened it. So. That shit is crispy. <laughs> that shit is mad hey, crispy. Hey, let me tell I you something, bro. It, that shit I respect it. Hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> this is brand new. I know. Yeah. I can tell. You think I'm going to take the steamer to a brand new shirt? Son, <laughs> or what? Go undershirt. I, I was I'm raised in. I don't know if it's bro. an Indian thing. That's what I was always told to do. Yo, yo, yo. It's a t-shirt. You're wearing a button-down t-shirt. 
Yeah. Just take out the undershirt. Let that chest so breathe. We in Miami. We in Miami. Miami. Look at Al. I'm, I'm Al got his little. Al got his little. Uh, what is it? What is it? Cat food. What is it called? Oh, my taco meat. Taco meat. Cat food. <laughs> uh, no, dog. Just, man, <laughs> belittling. You just gotta say it, dog. You, just say <laughs> you, just it. Gotta if you don't say know it. what it is. You say yeah. it. You go with it. And you keep moving. Right. But sometimes you gotta bring out the taco right, yeah, you meat. You got that I'm fancy feast, bro. Lil Nas X got a cat tongue though. He had some traction when he was lifting yeah. that ass. He was looking shit, bro. too close. Yeah. I was, dude. Yeah, like cute, Joe's hands. Close. Lil Nas X cute, bro. We gotta, nah, yo, he is cute, though. We got to get Lil Nas X in the podcast because nice he cute. He yeah. cute. Yeah. He got nice My lips. Motherfucker cute, yo. Yeah, he got, he got the fatty. He Mark got the... get mad jealous when he walks in. Nah, I won't. Nah, Mark's going to get mad jealous. Nah. Nah. Will, son. He got a fatter ass than you, too. Oh, my God. You really got to have a twerking contest. You're really twerk on Lil Nas X when he gets in here, bro. Oh, without a doubt. Both y'all twerking on Andrew the devil. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We're going to take a break for a second. Um, guys, Kratom is an herbal supplement that, depending on the strain, can help you relax or give you energy. And unlike CBD, you can actually feel Kratom working in your body. Now, Kratom uh, is often taken uh, before a workout, you know, maybe uh, before you go out there uh, for a nice little jog. I mean, it's like caffeine, but it's caffeine free. You know, some people even catch a little buzz, but they're not getting that tweaking that you get from caffeine. And let me tell you something. The only brand of Kratom that they should trust is Super Speciosa. Now, why is that? Well, Super Speciosa is not playing around. It's okay? pure. Pure. You're not going to get some other bullshit that th that's thrown in there. Okay? Nothing to cut it. It's just pure Kratom leaf. Pure Kratom Leaf, okay? Whatever vibe you're going for, Super Speciosa's Kratom has got you covered, all right? Their Kratom only has one ingredient, the Pure Kratom Leaf. Kratom is often sold at outrageous markups. Until now, Super Speciosa is offering an exclusive 20% off discount when you use the promo code FLAGRANT at checkout. Now, all of Super Speciosa's Kratom comes exclusively from Southeast Asia, once it sells out, it can take months to get to restock. So you got to get it while you can. Go to superleaf.com slash flagrant and use the promo code flagrant for 20% off your entire order. Now let's get back to other things happening. Uh, the Suez Canal blockage. That shit is finally free. Yo. Finally free. I think Lil Nas X licked it and then was able to move, move the boat. Lil Nas X came over there and he licked the end of the boat and it just jimmied free yo. or shimmied or whatever. And um, and now the boat is free, and now we can, you know, have trade again. Yo, shouts to the goat. Shouts to y'all. Yo, Egypt, y'all can't have any responsibilities anymore. I think we're done with that. No. Yeah. Wait, who runs the canals? Egypt, Egypt son. Egypt. I mean, the Jews took it over for like a week once. <laughs> it's like Airbnb. They airbnb that shit. <laughs> yeah. They really did. You, yeah. did. you did have it for about seven yeah. days. We had it. And then we yeah. gave took it back that to Sinai Penance, and then they gave it back, which is historical. Yeah. <laughs> so it's back in Egypt's hands, right? I'm just really proud of your history. I know my shit. He I, knows history. I know it's really history. annoying. I love history, man. It's yeah. worked out for us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, so everybody made a big deal about this fucking boat being stuck. Can y'all explain to me why they couldn't just move this fucking boat? I don't know. Shit was big. When it drifted, <laughs> shit was just really put a little big. bit more water. Get the water higher and then you can move it. It's a lot of water to raise the whole fucking canal. Um, they had to dredge out 60 feet deep. It still wouldn't jimmy free. I mean, it was. The it really, boat on its side is longer than the width. So when it was yeah. in, it went it went in. Mm. But all uh, the means of it, one yeah. bulldozer was sent first before. Uh, yeah. They need Francis and Ghana to go push it. Yeah. It really they did. They should have bust free real quick. You know what was crazy, though? That apparently, like, every day it costs, like, $9 billion. Yeah, crazy. Who's it, paying that? I don't know. Yo, they be saying shit like that. I think that's just when the company's losses or whatever. All yeah, across they have the livestock estimate. on those boats. I mean, they, they have everything. And now, now you have to also send those boats around those Africa. Those are people, Dove, just because we're <laughs> of color. You can call them <laughs> that, that was, was super fucking racist, wild, bro. bro. Wow. That was super racist. Cows. Flashback. Nah. Goats. Oh, God. Wow. Nah, that's oh, fucking, God. that is super hold, hold, racist. How else yeah, you right. supposed to get them Chinese kids we adopt over here, Dove? Hold on, hold on. I'm going to lob you guys <laughs> one. Send them motherfuckers back, yo. Know, this, we're talking <laughs> it's Egypt, and it happened during Passover. Come on, comedians. Go. Oh, Go. fuck. What? Yeah, I'm gonna pass over them jokes. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, I'm like, what what, what yeah, an odd setup that was. We don't get it, dude. What are you talking about? 
Egypt gave uh, Jesus safe haven. You don't remember that? <laughs> mm -hmm. When he was in, we gave him safe haven, bro. Yep. He knows. Safe I don't passage. know. He yeah. knows. I it's went to the synagogue where he was chilling, him and Mary, shacked up. <laughs> That's his mom, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they were shacked up, bro. Like, they yeah. can't be shacked. You can't be shacked up with your mom, bro. Good. Joe, yeah. Mary, why, why Joey. They parents. Yeah. It's a different relationship. Yo, son, Joey and Mary. <laughs> and he, Joe and Mary was shacked up, and Jesus was there too. How jealous you think Joe was of Jesus that he was in that pussy before he was? <laughs> <laughs> I would be. I would be looking at you your whole life like you little motherfucker. You Maybe better be God's son. You right? better be God's son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna beat your ass. Yo, that's crazy. The first time he saw Mary's pussy was when Jesus came out. Bro. Yeah. Just winking at him and shit. Wow. <laughs> wow. The disrespect, dude. Yeah. Joe kind of a simp. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, a super simp, dog. Is he not a super <laughs> simp? Motherfucker, your wife gets pregnant. You ain't even smash. You know what I mean? Three homies show up when she's giving birth. <laughs> Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? You ain't like, asking no questions. Yeah, you're like, you're not like, yo, who are y'all? How you know? Yeah, oh, you guys the doctor? They're like, nah. <laughs> we just here to watch. <laughs> hey, tell your wife split her legs open. We here to watch. Oh my god. That's crazy. We're not gonna talk about that. Conservative Christians, y'all not gonna <laughs> explain that one a little bit? Oh shit. Mark? Mark? What? They just gonna <laughs> show up? <laughs> yeah. Sit on the fucking bleachers? He's a secure man. Huh? He's a secure guy. How? Joseph. Joseph. No, that guy is uh, the ultimate secure dude. Unbelievable He's, security. Yeah, exactly. Or fucking retarded, bro. <laughs> <laughs> or genuinely oh retarded, bro. Like, people, are, I was talking to Theo on his oh podcast about this. Like, you know how there's like an IQ number that makes you retard? Yeah, like 90 or 80. Whatever, like, like let's say it's 80. There are people that are 81 that just walking around. Right. That doesn't concern anybody, <laughs> right? Like, like midget is four eleven, five foot isn't midget, but we're still looking at them like, man, come on, people, yeah. midget ass. <laughs> you know? My sister's five foot, and I still call her a midget. No, you don't. Yeah, she looks way taller than five feet, right, bro. She's five foot. Oh my god, that's amazing. Anyway, point is, there are <clears throat> retard midgets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? This yeah. episode is crazy. It is crazy, What's bro. It is like... crazy. We had just incredibly uplifting, inspirational story from Francis and Ganu. <laughs> and then the back half of it is we just. We got to balance it out. We are balancing it out. Okay? We're balancing it out. Yo, what's wrong, buddy? <laughs> Motherfucker's sweating, bro. He is. Chubb's sweating. This is the most Jewish I've ever seen him. <laughs> the anxiety. Look, guys. Um. Point is, <laughs> point is, I love when we go off the rails. It's been a long time since we've gone off the rails. We got it. Sometimes but my go favorite rails, thing is bro. we go off the rails and then you try to go, all right, guys, the point is, <laughs> point is like bro. there's a point to any of it. There is a point, bro. That <laughs> Suez point. Canal. Yeah. We we got to take it back, man. We got to oh, take, right. take it back. Take it back. Yo, son, we, we used to let Egypt think that they could choose their leader, right? They made some bad choices. Then we got up in there. We were like, uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why. Yeah. Is because you can't control your shit. You can't yeah. control it. Yeah. Sorry, Egypt. Yeah. We got to step in again now. Keep that Suez running. Mm -hmm. mm. We don't even have Panama, though. We don't even have the Panama Canal. What do you mean we don't have the Panama Canal? It's not ours, right? Who's we, got it? We gave it back to Panama. Come on, Mark. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did. That's just a PR move. They know what time it is. <laughs> we run let them try to close Minnesota. that. Let, the, let us show up with a boat and they're like, nah, you can't pass. <laughs> Alex laugh. <laughs> no can pass. America, no. America. <laughs> you about to be part of Guatemala if this shit don't open. Yeah, I'm going to put some respect on my laugh. But. So, uh, yo, you got the greatest laugh in history, dog. Yo, Alex, when we were doing this... <clears throat> Hypothetical country song that we might play, or we might not play. It's a banger certified. I have a feeling we're gonna play it. <laughs> yeah, was, we're definitely gonna play it. If anyone's listening intense, we've listened to it seven times before the episode. Oh, so. yes, I love it. It's such a great song. Uh, but we asked Alex, like, yo, we need your laugh in it, and Al couldn't recreate his own laugh. What the fuck, yo? Son, it's involuntary. Hmm. He literally was like, Tahu. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a fucking clown nose. Tahu. <laughs> 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 That's it. That's all you gotta do. 
Okay, fine. <laughs> I just be I just begin my feelings hurt at the first part and not here in the second. <laughs> <laughs> Al laughs like an eighty one IQ motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you got that five foot laugh. <laughs> Come on, bro. We got to meet an 81. We if you got, if you got a just above retard IQ, please holler at us. We need an interview at 81, dog. You don't, think, you don't think you know an 81? <laughs> you don't think so? No, personally? Like, it's my friend? Yeah. Or like... 81? Yeah, 80 to 100. No, no. I thought 100 is lit. Man, that's a great good? IQ. I thought 100 is the best you could get. <laughs> <laughs> I thought 0 to 100. The fuck are we going over 100 for? <laughs> I think 100 like, is average, I think. Yeah. What? I think it goes up to like 140 is genius, right? Why wouldn't it go to 100? I think it goes higher. We all got good. Yeah, it goes higher than 140. Yeah. What? 81 created nah. this test, dude. <laughs> it's just like Fahrenheit, bro. It's like Cause, Fahrenheit. Because there's Fahrenheit. no limit to the IQ, I don't over think. Over 145 is highly gifted. What's the highest IQ that's ever existed? That's fire, fire quote. Over 180, so probably. What's Alex Jones' IQ? <laughs> Alex Jones got the highest IQ in history, dog. 300 easy. 300 easy. My man's a Spartan. Like his cholesterol. <laughs> Alex, Alex Jones' cholesterol and IQ the same. <laughs> the same exact number. <laughs> What's the highest IQ, Dove? Uh, Someone named Anand Celeste Calway with a score jealous, of 263. Because he was hoping it would be much? a Jewish person. He was hoping it would be looks, a Jewish He looks person. a little disappointed now that you mentioned it. They're like, what? Look, look at him. Look, he doesn't yeah. believe it. You, you don't, don't believe buy it, huh? Don't buy it. How much, nah, how much was right. it? Put some oh. respect. We got an Edith Stern coming in over 200. Come on. Uh, hi, Edith. Some woman? Yeah, come on, bro. <laughs> some woman, bro? What is she end up being? That's the best y'all got? What is she end up being? A chef? <laughs> now he's trying to recreate it. He doesn't have to laugh anymore. No, no, we literally no. stole Alex's laugh. Yes, <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, well, the, first of all, what's this whole, the highest dub? What was it? Two sixty three. Two sixty three. That's fucking crazy, dog. Yeah. But remember something. It was founded by a psychologist named the actual IQ scoring William Stern. What? Of course, y'all do the best. And I don't even believe yeah. the IQ test no more, dude. Yeah. Nah. But also, you guys are just in charge of the test. It's like, yeah, yeah. You're an administrator. But how yeah. are you in charge of the test and you don't even have the top score on it? Yeah. That's yeah. kind of trash. That's like owning yeah. a bank, bro. It's like you guys control all the stuff going in and out. Yeah. yeah. I just want to take some royalties. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying that's not fair. Of course, Jews are going to do the highest. What is the test on? Like how many times you could change your table at a restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> like how do you have how do you have high how do you have a high IQ? What's like the third question? Just give me the third question on an IQ test. How many times your mom calls to ask if you're okay when you're sick? <laughs> I'm gonna give you a couple questions right now. Yeah, give me give me some IQ questions. Hopefully, I do better than my Wonderlick. <laughs> 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 yeah, Wonderlick is with Lil Nas X did that guy in the music video. Yeah, you got an 81. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's a Wonderlick. All right, give me some questions. All right. Do you remember his Wonderlick when he was like taking mad time? Bro, I questions? thought I bodied it, dog. <laughs> I genuinely thought I bodied it, bro. They, they're multiple choice and you got to... No, just ask the question, dude. Go. Which number should come next in the pattern? 37, Five. 34, 31, 28. 37, 34, 31. <laughs> I swear to God. Don't. 28. It 28. It's the simplest thing in the world. 40. <laughs> 25. No, no, I understand. Everyone was three less. <laughs> <laughs> So what's his IQ based off your so assessment, though? mad pressure to answer questions. Uh, that's a lot. Yeah. When yeah. your friends think you're dumb. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or smart. <laughs> he can't get it out. <laughs> he can't <laughs> laugh anymore, dude. That's crazy. It'll come back. It'll come back. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because you know what? Your dick should never take a break. When your dick needs to do something, it needs to be able to deliver at its highest ability. You need that Francis dick, that active dick. You need the, the most champion. active dick. Your dick should feel like Francis Ngannou. An active champion. An active champion. And you know how you do that? You do it with blue chew. Mm. Very simple. Same active ingredients as inside Cialis or Viagra. But I'm telling you that this is 10 times better because it's the chew. Okay? Alex said it made his dick grow. It gave me full control of when I nut. There are super special powers that are attached to the blue chew mm -hmm. that the asshole army has been reaping the benefits of for probably the last two years now. 
It's unbelievable. The chew is not playing around. You go get your chew right now and you satisfy your wife. You satisfy your girl. You satisfy your side chick. You satisfy that girl that you haven't slept with yet, but you want to make a great first impression. You can get them digmatized. And ladies, you deserve this. Okay? If you're just listening right now, your boyfriend, your side dude, your husband, whoever the fuck it is, isn't on it just yet, hasn't given you a sweet taste of that blue chew, shit, you get on it right now. You know why? Because it's free. It's free. Why would you not try the best dick of your life or have the best dick of your life if it's free? All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You go to bluechew.com, use the promo code flagrant, and you receive your first month free, okay? All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. This is a no-brainer. Go out there, get dicked or give dick, and make sure it's Blue Chew dick. Let's get back to the show. Okay, guys, there's serious things that we have to talk about. It's white boy summer, man. Let's, yo, you're right. Yo, are Congrats, we gonna, dog. Thank you. You're welcome. I've been working hard for this. Are we going to allow Chet Hanks to dictate anything? If not Chet Hanks, then who? Keep going. I mean, listen, this is the white boy of white boys. You, he uh, is you right. the heir to the white boy throne. Who's America's white boy? Thomas Hanks. That's a great point. Who's the only relevant son? Chet. Wait, he has another son? Uh, Colin. <laughs> oh, shit. Colin. Yep. Good actor. Colin is the Tom Hanks. Of Tom Hanks' sons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? You know? Like, everything about him is so Tom Hanks. He's and so Chet, Tom Hanks. Chet over here Chet on some free. wild boy shit. Chet yeah. broke free, dog. He really broke free. He, he knows why the cage bird sings. You can't, you can't, you can't contain Chet Hanks. I saw what you did right there. Yo, hey. Was that a Tom Hanks movie? No, that was Fuck. a <laughs> black-ass <laughs> book, dude. Come on. Oh, it was a book? Yeah. How did you see what happened if it didn't happen? I, I, th- I thought that you were referencing a Tom Hanks movie. Nah, Sounds like Tom Hanks, but why the cage bird sing, you know? Here. That's a Maya Angelou <laughs> poem, bro. Yeah, Say what? Bro. He's thinking bird cage with Robin Williams, Nathan Lane. <laughs> oh, yeah, bird cage. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Bro, you're going down. You're at like an 87 right now. I think I'm coming close, dude. I'm coming, I'm coming close to retard levels of IQ. I'm getting uncomfortable. I'm grabbing the mic stand. Point is, Chad Hanks, is he's a white boy. He, if anybody knows white boys, it's a guy that grew up in white boyness. Yeah. Chet. Can we listen to some Chet Hanks music? Are you guys familiar with any of his music? He made a college song. I know that. Probably slapped. I didn't know that he made music at all. Not Are you sure he made the college song or was it a... Uh, that's what I read. The redhead. Asher, Asher Roth. Roth. No, he, no, no, no. Not a song called College. He made a song at his college, like trying to promote school spirit or some shit like that. Like some a rap song. song. Yeah, it was, I just read about it on Wikipedia. I don't know too much about but it. But he heard. is a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we haven't heard any of his songs. No, nah, but he got a fire ass patois accent. Everybody hates on it because he's white. That shit is fire. Nah, he could go with it. Okay, but if we play it, then this video is going to be demonetized, so we can't play it. Fuck, so don't play Unless it. Unless we just listen to it and then. Oh, his name is Chet Hayes. <laughs> Let's go. Do it better. All right, let's listen to it. Go. Yo, that shit is flames, bro. Chet Hayes kind of nice. Chet Hayes. You don't like I Chet Hayes? I wasn't feeling it, but maybe I'm Come just a on, hater. Come on, dude. Wasn't it better than your expectation? Okay, I'll give you... By the middle of it, I was like, okay, it's not as bad as it started off. I was I, bopping to it. Yeah. I was I don't Mark, know, what you think? It's just so easy to make a good rap song. If you have yo 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 yo, if you have make one hit country song, (laughs) and all of a sudden you think it's easy to make a hot rap song, bro. bro. If you have unlimited money and you know everyone in Hollywood, you don't think you can make one banger of a rap song? Bitter right now, (laughs) you sound bitter. Really does. You don't realize you the Chet Hanks of comedy, right? This guy, this guy, oh man, this guy, oh man. You just know everybody in the industry. That's not- <laughs> yeah. What do you mean, brother? <laughs> what do you mean, brother? What are you talking about, brother? <laughs> oh my god. But it shit gotta oh sound god. good at the end of the day. Yeah, you just get someone to make that shit sound fire. Why would you put out some shit that's like mid? Do you have one where he's filled into his body yet? <laughs> Because that motherfucker was looking slender in that yeah, last bro. one. We need one where he's... He was looking a little Colin-ish, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, he, he had a lot more Colin. Yeah. And yeah. we need him a little bit more thick. <laughs> you want the thickums? <laughs> I, think, I think we need to see thick Chad Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Yo, that's just, Chad Hanks the GOAT! That's, that's all right! I would yeah. go so far to say Chad Hanks better at music than Tom Hanks is at acting, yo. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> What? I can't. I can't even do it just because that's like. Come on, don't go at Tom. You love Hanks Tom like that. that much? Yeah, that, yo, that's Tommy. Tom, that's <laughs> Tommy Hanks, bro. Come on, bro. I mean, how great is Tom Hanks at acting? Let's be honest. I mean, he's pretty fire. He's fire, is he dog. though? I mean, but, I wouldn't. Yeah. Know, but. 
What? He played at 81, dog. Huh? He played at 81. Yeah, that's a great point. Man, he did, dude. But it's yeah. easy to pretend to be retarded. <laughs> what do you mean? And Southern. Ah, that's tricky. Too. He did both, yo. Yeah, that's a tricky. <laughs> that's two. Right, that's fine. two almost retard voices. You got to figure out how to do both at the same time without letting one dominate. Can you keep dipping on this 81? Like, oh, oh, hold on. Yeah. Better say something smart before I think I'm Delicate actually retarded. Delicate balance. <laughs> Yo, they gave him a gun. Yo. The U.S. Army gave Forrest Gump a gun. But he was so dumb, he was like, let me just run. Let me just save everybody. Let me just run. That's a good-ass point. Damn. Yeah, I probably didn't even know how to work the fucking yeah. safety. Chet Hanks is fire singing, bro. I that was great, dude. Yo, I think we got to put some respect on Chet Hanks. And he's live, too. You can't forget. That's a fact. Yeah, that's it. What you, what that you, was that? live, son. That was live. Yeah, that was. What? What is? Ha what, what video you see? I, I don't think that was live. I just don't believe that was live. But how? Or maybe you know they more have about the fucking this? record track, and he's just mouth. That is lip sync. Yeah. Ashley Simpson. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 yo. People we, gonna say that we know if, how if you we sound release a, a song, son. people gonna say that I ain't really sing it, bro. I'm gonna sing it live. I'm gonna go a cappella. Ooh, let's go. If you don't think, if but not you, right now. I'm just saying, if you had such a song, how how would it sound? You know what, Al? What's you that? you put me in an awkward position, bro. Mm, why? I think we gotta. I think we gotta give him a taste. Mm. You have your hand on that. Have your finger on that space bar in case we need to stop it. But I think we need. I think we need to give the asshole army a little taste of the greatest. Of the greatest number yeah. one hit in history. Why are you why are you wagging fingers? Listen, shut up, truffle. <laughs> <laughs> your fucking mouth, okay? <laughs> listen, the people need the people need <laughs> this right now. The <laughs> vibes are cri yo, listen. The people need it. You get a salary now, baby. Hold on, baby. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, son. We about to give it to him. Are y'all ready? All I gotta say is, all I gotta say is, we were in Nashville, we've been in Florida, and the rest of the country needs to catch up. You know, mm. I don't want to put out medical, you know, misinformation or whatever. So don't trust nothing I'm saying. None of this is true, but this is all false. Don't trust feelings. anything like it's that. No it's facts, just, it's just feelings. feelings. We gotta open the country up, baby. We gotta open her up. Mm. Don't we gotta open her up, Al? I think we gotta open her up. Mark, what do you think? You think we gotta open her up? I think, yeah, there's an argument to be made. And there's an argument <laughs> to be made. We're not saying it's facts or anything like that. We're just, you know, being hyperbolic, and this is music. Do you think we gotta open her up? I don't know. Convince me. Okay, I might have to. Dubbits, hush. Press play. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> On the couch for 13 months. Ooh. All I keep thinking about is getting fucked up. Wanna take all my sweats and clip my pews. Hey, where's my picker? Tired of getting caught jerking off on Zoom. What are you doing, sir? Foucher says I need to double up my mask. Tell the little gerbil he can kiss my ass. What do you think, boy? I think it's time Open her up like a can of beans Open her up like a jar of weed Open her up like Forrest Whitaker's eye Open her up and let's see what's inside Like a good old boy with a sharp knife skin in the bud Anymore, Al. <laughs> Al. I don't know if we can give any more. Shit, that was fire. So. <clears throat> I can't believe Should it, yo. Should we give another verse? <laughs> I don't know. If we can, Al. Nah, 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 we gotta wait. We gotta. We gotta wait. They hit a second verse with the video. Ooh. Oh shit! <laughs> maybe the maybe the Patreon. Maybe we drop okay. the whole Patreon. song on the Patreon. Love it. Yeah, that's because because right there's a rumor on the streets that we might have that we might have. A rap verse from Jelly Roll on it. I'm just saying, there's a mm. rumor. God damn. Mm. There's a rumor on the streets that there might have been a crazy collab mm. of incredibly successful mm. Nashville artists. That's all I can say. I can't right. say too much, you know, for legal reasons, et cetera. But if you're not familiar with Jelly Roll, check him out. Check I, that's the what was that song? Right what was that song we Save played? Save Me. My God, dude. <laughs> Fuck. Bro, we, we really made Akash cry. Before. Son, I got Yo. emotional. Yo. <laughs> yep. Yo, this is this guy's the truth. This guy's the truth. I mean, we had our boy Dave as well. Dave, the truth. I mean, we had a bunch of people that were putting it together. 
Josh Wolf, the mm. truth, another person that we got to, you know, Ooh. stay silent about. We got to stay silent about another person, <laughs> but a legend. Yeah. I know some of y'all like probably Garth Brooks. I can't say if it is or it isn't. Mm. Actually, I can say it's not Garth Brooks, but somebody <laughs> very successful, incredibly successful. All I'm saying is we might have to take the country music charts by storm. You know what it sounds like? Talk to me. To me. It sounds like it's about to be a white boy summer. I think it might I think, be. I think a strong case is being presented. I think it might be. Between Chet Hanks' is singing and your country music, hey. it might be a white boy summer. It might be a white boy summer? It might be a white boy summer. Maybe that's a song collab you guys could make. It might be. WBS, you know what I mean? It might be. It might be. But uh, this was such a big collab, you know what I mean? That's true. I don't know. I don't know if it's just a white boy thing. This might be just a whole world thing. I think the whole world might get behind this because it's time oh, to open her oh, up. Oh, yeah. It's now, not how are you going to react to criticism of people saying that you're stealing little Nas X's whole trajectory? <laughs> 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 Uh, do you have an answer for the critics? I do have an answer critics for the critics. Yeah. I, I, I do have an answer. For the <laughs> At least I'm straight. <laughs> At least I'm straight. Maybe you guys will like that part of me, huh? Oh my god! It got me. Oh, I didn't see it coming. Damn, bro. <laughs> kind of like Joyner Lucas's kids. <laughs> Yo, what an old man thing to do for a rapper. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You're supposed to be a rapper. You be, my children are seeing this. I was disappointed. Does, uh, have your children watched any Eminem videos? Yeah, have bro. they listened to any Eminem music? Aren't you signed to Eminem? Yeah. What a nerd ass thing to say, yeah. bro. My children are watching it. <laughs> Come on, bro. Ain't nothing wrong with gay kids, bro. <laughs> kids is mad gay. Your Jesus is mad gay, yo. Jesus is mad gay. All right. All right. What else we got, yo? Uh, Jake Paul, Ben Askren. Oh, yeah. That was, it was a phenomenal press conference. Oh, the highlights were great. Son, the, the highlights were great. Did you see Ben Askren's promo video? F yeah. I saw you retweet it. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. This guy's great at content. He is great. And even when he's calling Jake, yeah. He didn't call him Jake Paul. He calls him Logan Paul's yes, little brother. Yes. <laughs> and you know that's the thing that yeah. enrages him. The oh, most. I yeah, dude, of course. I'll be honest, I think I think Jake seemed a little nervous. I think Jake was just out trolled, but I still think Jake is gonna win the fight. But yeah. I think he's not yeah, used yeah, to yeah. being on the end where like a fighter is better at that part than him. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he ever saw that coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a great call. That's a great call. And that can throw you off because you're yeah. like, I'm usually the one that like is antagonistic and doing yeah. these things. I'm the asshole someone. that gets under your skin. How yeah. the fuck are you doing this to me? I did not see that coming. Yeah, there was one point where like he just didn't know what to say. And he's like, stupid pussy ass bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, you almost felt bad. You're like, oh, fuck, you didn't have a line yeah. for that moment. So Ben is under his skin. Oh, yeah. I wonder if he goes out and tries to knock him out too hard. And that works in Ben's favor. I don't know. I mean, listen, everybody I know that knows boxing, you, Rogan, that's about it. They say he could throw, like, this kid's legit nice at boxing. No, no, he's... And Ben is not nice at, he might be good at fighting, but not yeah, boxing. He's good. The only chance that Ben has, and it is a significant chance, is having good enough head movement to avoid Jake, mm -hmm. and one, having a strong enough chin, and he has a fucking excellent chin. Okay. He does have an excellent chin. He's been hit hard with the little four ounce gloves. Having enough chin to sustain punishment until Jake gets tired. Because mm -hmm. we don't know what Jake's cardio is going to be like. Like, it takes fighters years to build up to an eight round fight. Like, most fighters, like, uh, I think amateurs are three rounds now. There was a time I think there were four rounds. Mm -hmm. Like, and a lot of guys will fight four rounders and build up to an eight round fight. Eight rounds is a lot. Yeah. And Ben has full fight cardio. Yeah. He has. Five five minute round cardio if he needs. So if he can do five fives, he can do eight threes. I listen, but it's different. You yeah. know, boxing is also different. We'll see. But you like to, you probably go, okay, this guy's been fighting longer. He's been in the gym longer. He's been doing this for the last fucking decade and a half or whatever, or however long he's been doing it. The guy's, the guy's cardio is probably at a level that's better. And I think he's like, I'm just going to try to wear Jake down. And then eventually his cardio goes. And then I'll just beat him up and hopefully get a stoppage. Yeah. So it's really about Jake's cardio. And if Jake is too excited and trying to knock him out too quickly because he's too angry, he just really wants to expose this guy that has embarrassed him, Yep, that cardio goes. Mm. How did his pad work look to you in that promo video, Ben? His asking. pad work always looks trash, bro. That's what I was thinking. It always looks trash. But it doesn't mean that one, he doesn't hit hard, 
And two, that he's not going to uh, be in there and engage in doing some what they call like dirty boxing. Mm. Like I think Ben could get in there in the clinch and then work out of the clinch well. What does that mean? Uh, the clinch is like when they're kind of yeah. like holding each right. other and like in a phone booth, they're yeah. just real tight. Yeah. So that's where I think he'll do. I think he'll kind of like hold one arm and then hit him with some uppercuts, maybe some overhand and rights. Like not that, technically legal. Uh, it's not technically illegal either. Okay. Right. It's just like in the gray area. Gray, You're not going to get a point deducted, mm -hmm. but because uh, you can work inside. But I think that's where he's going to feel more com more comfortable because he can also control him there. Yeah. If he needs to, he can wrap him up, and then once he wraps him up, there's nothing Jay can do. Right. You're talking about an elite wrestler. Yes. There's nothing you you just got to wait for the ref to come in and separate you. Right. Because you there physically there's nothing you'll be able to do. Right. This guy's like ability to manipulate <clears throat> your balance with his is next level. Right. Okay. The guy couldn't even strike, and he would just dominate fighters for most of his career simply because of that. Right. Same thing with like Khabib. Like Khabib doesn't have to be good at striking because once he grabs you, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Mm. Like when he said to Jake at the press conference, he's like. If, if we I were in an alley, the street, I and would I, do a homicide on yeah, you. Yeah, if I wanted, I could do a homicide on you. Yeah. Like, you know that, too. Yeah. <laughs> that's <a> fucking... <laughs> that's kind of crazy. That's a bar, you. dude. Like, I could kill you yeah. if I wanted to. Yeah. A guy in rainbow sandals says that to you? <laughs> yeah. You got to believe that. <laughs> if a guy in sandals ever says, if I wanted to kill you right now in an alley, I could do that. Yeah, I believe And Jake that. was like, come on. But he wasn't. Yeah. The best thing Jay can do is just make it about boxing. Right. Like, I would even lean in and be like, yeah, he kicked the crap out of me in wrestling or do all that. Of course, of course. You're in boxing. Yeah. Mm. You don't know how to do that in this specific thing. I'm knocking your ass out. This is no, not an alley. This is not an alley. Yeah. This is a ring. Yeah. Mm. Do you think Jake feels like he's in over his head a little bit? No. Really? Because I think he's fucking people up in the gym because everything that I've heard, he's legit. Mm. Everything that I've heard, and I trust the guys that I've heard it from. My guys told me before the Nate Robinson fight, they're like, yo, this kid is fucking people up in L.A. I think it was in L.A. Like legit people, not professional box, but like legit gym guys. Yeah. He's fucking them up. Right. Not just like, oh, he had a spirited sparring match. He's fucking them up. Right. So on paper, everything should go his way. But if he can't hit him, if Ben is elusive enough, can't do damage. If Ben gets in his head, how big of a deal is that in boxing? It can expose you. Because mm -hmm. I know in basketball, if you're at the free throw line in your head, you're fucked. But this is different. It seems like yeah. it's different. It can expose you, I think, man. I think it can. How so? I think it just makes you want to knock them out, mm -hmm. make you want to knock the person out quicker, and then you just exhaust yourself, and you only have so much fuel in the tank. Right. Eventually, you run out of fuel. Yeah. And an eight-round fight is about fuel management. Mm -hmm. As you get into eight, 10, 12... It's just as important to be able to manage your output yeah. as it is to like have those skills to be in there. Because right. you can have all the skills in the world. If you got two rounds in you, you're fucking done. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at Conor McGregor. Yeah. And every boxer goes in with a game plan. So if you get in somebody's head and you get, get them off their game plan, now yeah. they're just scrambling. Yes. And once you do that, so he now can't you pick stop the shit talk in the ring even. Ben Askren got to be running his fucking mouth in the ring. No, I, I don't even think he has. I think he has to treat him like a little kid, undermine him, kind of tease him. Like, really get him, and if the most important thing that he can do, and this is hard to do it, but is, like, is flip the internet on him. Because mm -hmm. right now, the internet is, is like, Jake is the man, and he's trolling everybody, and he's, like, he's almost 6'9 in the yes. boxing, like, the MMA community, yes. yeah. right? So if Askren can flip the internet, be like, oh, shit, Askren did this thing that's better, and now Jake is looking silly, like, him pushing his face... I thought meant that like Jake got under Askren's skin because Askren never makes physical contact. Mm. Like Askren's, the, his whole thing is like, why are we saying we're going to fight each other? We're literally going to do it for money hmm. in yeah. two weeks. Like I've heard him say that to people. Yeah. Like I'm going to fight. You're going to get your chance. You don't have to yap right now mm -hmm. about this. But when he pushed his face and then walked away, I was like, oh shit, is Jake under Askren's skin? Or did Ashton go, I can mush this guy's face and there's nothing he can do to me? I thought it was this, yeah, it was like a publicity thing. Like, here, I'm going to shove his face. Everybody's going to talk about that. Mm. He's not going to do anything. He can't, like, this is, this is the, not the boxing ring. I'll win here. Yeah, yeah. It was cool to see Jake's reaction, though. Like, people criticized it. Like, he just slapped his stomach, but his knee-jerk reaction was, like, pull back and then react with a punch. Mm. Like, when most people are, like, attacked when they don't know, they just retreat and they put their hands up and they stop. They kind of freeze. Hands right. up, freeze. But his reaction was to move his head back and then 
yeah. counter. Yeah. That was the knee jerk reaction. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like to learn those instincts. He's only in boxing a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Like It'll counter with an open hand. He he can't fuck the money up either. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying that's still if his it's reactive though. Reaction. If it's his knee jerk, you're not thinking, you're just yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah, good point. I, I don't know. I just thought I always like seeing like what do people really do in the moment? Mm. Like how are they really gonna react? Yeah. And um he tried to at least counter. Yeah. I, look, either way, I'm fucking excited. If Jake gets knocked out, you think he like goes crazy, or even if he win or loses on like technicality or something, like I don't really see Ben reacting negatively if he loses. I think he's just sort of like, all right, whatever, moving on. If Jake loses, do you think he throws a fit? Does he like go wild? I think he spirals a bit. I, I the thing is like in my interactions and like I think most people's personal interactions with with Jake, he's like just the sweetest kid. Mm. Like he's just a fucking nice guy. So he understands how to play the character and like hype things up, okay. right? So I he was very like humble after his defeat of Nate Robinson. He's like, I hope he's okay, and you know he called me out and blah blah blah. Like yeah. So I don't foresee him like making a big stink about it <clears throat> if he gets knocked out. Like I think. But if he does get knocked out, I don't see who he's going to fight again. Mm. So that's where shit gets tricky. Like, he needs this to go well. He needs... I mean, if he wins, it's going to be... Him and Conor McGregor is going to be a thing that would make a ton of money. Bro, if he knocks Askren out, the fight game is his. And the, mere, the mere feat of making the amateur boxing world as lucrative as the heavyweight boxing world, potentially. Like, yeah. if he can pull that off, that in, a, in and of itself is just like... Fuck, good for you. You fucking did it. Pick whoever you want. Yeah. That's in the MMA world. Yeah. And then fight them after that. Yeah. If he knocks out Askren, I'll be honest with you. If I'm Connor, I stay the fuck away. Really? really? Why? Because you said Connor can box, Askren cannot. So to me, if I'm Connor, and I, we don't know if Connor wants it, but it's like, I mean, this is an amateur boxer. I'm essentially an amateur boxer. Yeah. Who cares? I stay away. If I'm Connor, Wait, I stay what? away. If he knocks out Askren. Okay. Because Askren has been... Okay, so Askren has been in there with guys saying. that strike. Yeah. It's not like he hasn't. And he has a chin. So if you manage to knock out a guy with a chin, then you got... This guy's punching power. Like, the only time like Askren's been like significantly hurt in his career is when he got kneed in the fucking head at full run yeah like right. jorge's knee yeah which was by design but like that never happens i don't want to call it lucky because he did train it and worked on it and predicted right. where he was going to go he's going to shoot for the for the double leg right. and then he need him right there but like uh, i'll take that not happening nine out of ten times right yeah pretty infrequent yes so the guy's got a chin he's dealing with bigger gloves so the shit hurts less and he knows how to avoid a punch. He's been in there with guys who punch. Yeah. And they haven't hit him enough to knock him out. Mm -hmm. And they know he's only doing one thing to them. Right. Is wrestling them. Yeah. Like, it's not like he's like this versatile fighter. He's going into every fight going, I'm going to grab you. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to put you down. And then I'm going to punch you. Mm -hmm. That's all. Right. So, I don't know. I, it's just hard for me to just go, yeah, there's no way. But, like, Connor went rounds with Floyd, and maybe Floyd was just, like, playing with him, but, like... Yeah, you say Floyd is carrying him. Floyd's carrying him. Floyd don't train for the fight. Apparently, he only just did, like, push-ups and shit like that. <laughs> and even then, he just did whatever he wanted with him. Like, Floyd, I think Connor, like, has good head movement, you know, but, like, he couldn't hurt Floyd. He didn't have the power in the gloves. Like, it's really interesting. Connor is a fucking hard puncher at, like, 145 pounds. As a boxer, like, the hands just didn't seem hard. It was really weird. I don't know what it is, but the the punchy power just wasn't there. It's because you know, there's so like, much more glove, I assume, right? Yeah, I guess. But like he caught Floyd with a clean uppercut. Mm -hmm. Like Floyd, I think lunged in and like uh, he caught him early with just a clean uppercut. Like hit him. There's nothing. Floyd's got a beard on him, but like. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm Connor. If he knocks out Penn Askren violently, like just as dominant as he was against Nate Robinson, if I'm Connor, I stay away. Hmm. I say away. And then if you're if you're Jake, you just fucking call out whoever the hell you want. Who would who do you think would take him in the MMA world? I, if I'm him, I call out Khabib. <laughs> He's retired, nah. undefeated, not the best striker. Yeah, I don't think Khabib could care less unless you like go with his wife. And then I think if Khabib does that, 
I don't think he's like looking to play by rules or whatever. He I think clearly he's like a hundred million. You go, you go. We can make a hundred million, or you can make a hundred million, Khabib, and you just go. Why don't you just donate this to your favorite causes? Here's a hundred million dollars. Give it to the people of Dagestan. You have to fight one guy that you can't really fight. And Khabib allegedly. could have like a, an out because he said I retired from UFC. From UFC. Yeah. But I don't know. But you got to call out the MMA community. That's yeah. what it is. Just keep going through it. It'd be interesting to see. Speaking of uh, fights, uh, Izzy apparently got dropped from BMW because he said that he would rape Kevin Holland. Son, the Prime Minister of New Zealand was criticizing it. And it's like, yo, what are we doing? But that, yo, low key, that's how famous he is over there. Uh, that's fire. Like, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, you got to be famous for the president. Like, if Biden. Hit me up, and he was like, "Yo, you can't say that shit." As <laughs> I'd be like, "Whoa, bro, I'm fucking, yeah. I'm pretty famous." Yeah, you know what I mean? that was like when Obama called Kanye dumb. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and Kanye was like, "Wait a minute, what I say, yeah. what I say gets to the president." Yeah. So that's a huge compliment. And to you know, I mean, if we had to make an argument for BMW or the New Zealand, like he did hump Paul Acosta. Yeah. After he knocked him out. Yeah. So he's rapey. <laughs> <laughs> yo like yo kevin holland better watch his mouth yo izzy could take that ass if he wanted to because he'd easily knock kevin holland out he would easily knock him out and then what he does with him after he knocks him out is up to izzy at that point after you're knocked out there's nothing you can't do if he wants to take that ass you take that ass you better hope herb dean blocks his dick from going into you maybe it wasn't like inaccurate to say that maybe it wasn't but BMW, you got to know who you're doing business with. Yeah, man. This guy rapes dudes. Oh, my God. No, no. It's all jokes. It's all jokes. It's all jokes. No, nah, but like, I don't know. I think that BMW shit is so corny. That, that's the whole problem with the cancel culture thing is like BMW knows who they're doing business with. They know that he's uh, somebody who's like hyperbolic on the Internet. He makes these jokes all the time. And they love it. And they love it. How big it's. And they tell him. you that when they sign. Oh, we love yes. that about you. Don't change that. And then and the social pressure. May, forces them into making a decision like this. It's not BMW that wants to make a decision, right? It is all these idiots on Twitter go, BMW, you see what you're sponsoring? They also go to Puma. They also go to all these other sponsors, and they go, they, they've done it with us. We some, see something crazy, and then I see them tweeting at all of our sponsors going, these are the people that you want to advertise? It's and some, we've lost advertisers because of it in the Yeah, past. but like, I would love to see BMW be like, you know what? No. One company be like, no, you guys are going to forget about this in a week. Yes. You're not going to buy our cars anyways. You're too poor. You have nothing yeah. better to do but complain on Twitter. Yeah, that's true. Clearly your job ain't shit. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah, just yeah. wait it out. That's, I would love to see one sponsor set that precedent. That's a just great one. point. Like activists don't have enough money to drive a BMW. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your morals, you poor fuck. <laughs> on the bus, you loser. <laughs> your monthly pass you can't even afford. Bum asses. Get out of here. <laughs> you ain't got no BMW money. <laughs> yeah it's a shame it is a fucking shame but i guess i i do understand how these corporations work and why they have to do it they don't it's not that they want to it's not like they're finding out about that and going i can't be associated they know they're associated they they just bend to that pressure from social media yeah i push back on the word have to just because i don't i understand why they do it but i don't think they have to do it because it always goes away in a week they feel like they have to. Yeah, and they, maybe it right. only goes away because everybody caves in, right. so then we're allowed to move on. But right. I would love one company, and granted, it's easy to say when it's not my money, but I would love one company to be like, let's see how long you guys are really pissed off about this. Yeah. Let's just see. Yeah, I mean, is there such a thing as cross the line and pre-fight like shit talk? Banter? Yeah, we're going to yeah. beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. Like, but I'm going to physically abuse you. Potentially kill. Yes. Like, people have died in this sport. Yeah. So... If someone said, I will murder you, it'd be like, no, it's a... DeAndre Hopkins said, I want to kill someone in the ring. I think Tyson said, I want to eat your children. Yeah. Wait, to what? Lennox Lewis, yeah. who yeah. doesn't He have said, I'm going to eat his children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, Tyson said crazy shit. He yeah. Says, yeah. I think Tyson said he's going to rape people. I wish they confirmed yeah. that one. That one's still up in the air. What's that? Him and Len Lennox Lewis. I think it was him and a Holyfield. A Holyfield. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be interesting. I want to see that. And Holyfield stayed in shape, man. Yeah. Was Lennox Lewis super nice, like historically nice? Yeah. yeah. Like kind or like good at boxing? Good at boxing. Yeah. Amazing. Unbelievable. And kind. Yeah. And kind. <laughs> when he would like talk in interviews, sounds like the nicest guy. Yeah. He just <laughs> never had a home. It was really tricky because like they tried to market him as British, but like he kind of like grew up in Canada. Yeah. So he didn't really have a place. He didn't have like a, people didn't understand, but he was also Jamaican. Yeah. So, that, like, you just didn't understand who he was. Yeah, yeah. So, 
I think it was really hard at that time to like get behind people. They're like, okay, he's black. So he's either from America or Britain. Right. And then it was, wait, he's Canadian? What? Yeah. But his passport is British. We just didn't understand how to digest a guy like that. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a shame because he was an excellent boxer. Yeah. Like fucking seemed like excellent. He, I remember the the belt getting passed a few times back and forth, but he seemed like the one that was just like oh, the yeah. best. Oh, yeah. Super dominant. Yeah. Super, super dominant. Um, all right, guys. I think we're I think we got a great yeah. episode. I hope you enjoyed um listening to to Francis, man. It was really cool that he was able to do that. Um, thank you so much, Francis. Yeah. We really appreciate you and wish you best of luck and everything. And I would love to see you own the uh heavyweight boxing uh title as well. That'd be Ill. absolutely historic. So let's see what happens. Um guys, we love you, we appreciate you. We'll see you over there at Patreon, patreon.com slash flagrant2. And this is how we protect ourselves, man, because, you know, these brands, as, as great as they are, as supportive as they are, and they have been for us, you never know yeah. when something could happen to us, like happen to Izzy. So the way that we make sure that we can keep this whole operation going is we have this Patreon, and you guys have supported it and made it the number one comedy Patreon in the world. And we appreciate that so much. So keep on spreading the word. Keep on supporting it. We love you. We appreciate you. Patreon.com slash flagrant2. We'll see you there. Peace.